and like I mentioned, founder of the National Robotics Engineering Center, NREC. He's also the chairman and chief science officer of Astrobot. Uh, Grad is widely known for all his achievements in the robotics community. He has quite many of them. Okay. Uh, some of his awards include the Engelberger Technology Award, Design News Achievement Award, Hero of Manufacturing Award, and Aviation and Space Technology Award. Okay. Okay. Thank you. So I could have drawn the card for uh, our nuclear robotics or um, autonomous driving or um, ag robotics. I think many of you know that I'm an avid farmer and have uh, exploited that for years uh, and love them all. And uh, uh, space robotics is one of those uh, great arenas that we have transformed in our time. So this one is the uh, unquestioned greatest robot of the last century. It is the uh, Russian Lunokhod that uh, achieved tens of kilometers of driving first time out of the chute. Uh, it is uh, just astounding technology uh, initiative and uh, uh, accomplishment. And uh, that was uh, at a time when uh, America uh, was making a golf, court, golf cart and driving around. Of course, it was, we have a rover. It's just we got a human in there with a pedal and a steering wheel. And uh, that uh, is completely a consequence of the Cold War and a space race that uh, issued that era of accomplishment. And all that is uh, deep history. Uh, it is a changed world uh, in many ways. Uh, that uh, it uh, is now uh, a pursuit of resources. Uh, there is uh, ice and methane known to exist on the moon in usable volumes. Uh, on Mars, the big accomplishment, big discovery from 2015 was liquid water. And that is something that will drive robotics for decades to come. That uh, uh, underlying the moon and Mars are cave systems that dwarf those on Earth. So these have been known for decades and decades and decades. Uh, however, there's never been a way to get into them until now. And these caves aren't just little things like the cross section of this room. They are like the cross section of this building in many cases. And they go for tens of kilometers. Uh, and of course, in a cave, uh, you're protected from the heat of the surface and the radiation and the micrometeorites, and uh, those are the natural protections that make them the ultimate destination. Um, so here's the big discovery from the last couple of years taken from orbit. These are the so-called pits, one from the moon, one from Mars. They show you the diversity of the formation. These are larger than our National Football League stadiums. And there are hundreds of them. And uh, it's very open questions. What are they? How are they formed? Uh, good destinations for life seeking and the like. And uh, uh, our ambition in very short order is to um, get to the first of these pits, to fly over it. Uh, model it, explore it, and ultimately go into it, uh, seeking the cave. Uh, this is one of our trial runs. Uh, first after a flyover, then uh, robotics from the surface, and then some uh, early work down in the hole. This is small scale relative to what's on the planets. And uh, the other big game changer is complete pre-knowledge, mapping at the uh, submeter scale, the submeter resolution of the entire surface of the Moon and Mars. And what that enables by way of uh, visual guidance for uh, trajectory control and for safeguarding and landing, what it enables by way of pre-planning mission route lighting conditions um, is astounding re relative to the unknowns that the uh, Russians in the Apollo era faced. Uh, 
A lot of other things have gotten easier too. But uh, uh, so now I want to uh, shift and uh, just give a little sense of uh, some of what's come out of here. So uh, when we created NREC, uh, America uh, really wasn't in the space robotics business. And I, I know it seems odd, but if you turn the clock back 20 years, uh, we had no robot missions. Uh, first Sojourner, the little one, was 97. And uh, that uh, we were very influential in uh, initiating that movement, of course, starting well before 97, and then building the case and building the technologies and building the people and uh, uh, doing what was called for. So those range everything from the mobility to the idea of uh, drilling for ice at the pole or even the existence of ice at the pole. When we first proposed this, the proposal was rejected. We only asked them for, I don't know, 150 million. But they rejected the proposal <laughs> on the basis of no evidence for the existence of polar ice. And now, through exploration, it's been absolutely confirmed. And it is the hottest objective right now with federal mission pursuing it. And we're very involved in that. Um, other things we worked out were the idea of what it would look like, the vertical arrays, how the drills would work. Of course, we do a lot more than drawing pictures. Uh, these were uh, implementations of uh, all kinds. Uh, the only thing, uh, uh, the other thing we did was to go into uh, a, a pit for the first time. And uh, of course, there are many volcanoes in the planets of high interest, but these pits, as you now see, uh, are uh, a, uh, a driving motivation for what the world is. Uh, next doing, uh, both for exploration uh, and for habitat. So, the, you know, uh, uh, technologies that made, made it, this one were, were included uh, uh, trinocular vision, which was a big thing in the day. The first of the spherical range sensors, which is handcrafted and is up on the thing. It had non-contact uh, foot proximity sensing so that it could know where those footfalls were before you touched, and also that it was uh, rug and uh, every one of these things just had deep, deep, deep technologies in them and derived from them. So I mentioned the caves. Uh, we've been in the caves, <laughs> tunnels, mines, caves. Uh, actually, um, the second year of the Terrigators, that would have been like 1984. Five maybe, 84, 85. This is uh, first modeling uh, by an autonomous traverse. Through. I, I dug it out because it was like the early, early, early work, right? And of course, uh, by the way, we still do that kind of thing. <laughs> and uh, it's risen to commercial relevance. But uh, uh, as you've seen on the planets, it's now risen to very high relevance. Let me get rid of that. So uh, it's not just driving around. This was uh, seeking meteorites. And so this one had the first of the uh, classifiers uh, that operated in the physical world and also the um, search, uh, a, a search engine in the natural world. And the combination of those two could distinguish meteorites from all general rocks. So if we put 1,000 rocks here, most people in the room couldn't pick out the meteorites. And uh, this was five for five. First time out of the chute. Um, it also got us accustomed to the deep cold was one of the challenges of the moon. So this one then uh, was uh, 200 kilometers at a time when that was just unimagined in the exploration world. Unimagined. And I bring it up because that brings us to uh, the time that the first of the Mars rovers landed on Mars. So those were the same year. We were in the desert with the 200 kilometers at the time of the first one. So what the heck did we have uh, to do with actual missions? Um, I'll start with uh, this, which is the moment of triumph. And uh, the, uh, uh, the cool guy in the big celebration is our Tony Spear. And then, uh, uh, I think there are only two of us in the room that would remember Henry Stone in the foreground. This one of the first, like, I don't know whether to call him a robo-grad. I think we were still 
CS at the time. Uh, and then, uh, uh, you know, people in this room that produced the first of the uh, safeguarding and guidance and the first of the planning. When I say first of, even though they've evolved, they are exactly how it's done today. And uh, because it's so good, it's utilized in every mission and will be forever. It's not like they're, you, one of the nice things about inventing is that you never uninvent. You know, it's like never goes backwards very much. Uh, so uh, there's a big difference between uh, pieces and parts and uh, full up missions. And at some point, this is a community that uh, does a lot more than uh, the big ideas. Uh, so we're heading to the moon. And it's a pretty simple-minded thing. You commission a launch, create uh, the lander, a rover, and uh, everything that goes with those. So, um, of course, it's a great city and a culture for making things. And uh, these landers are just uh, robots with rockets. Everything else that we do pertains. Um, this is an example of an uh, experiment some of the big things in space for 2015 is that uh, one of the launch companies landed, brought a, a, a stage back and landed on his tail. Uh, one of the uh, space entrepreneurs, Jeff Bezos of Blue Origin, brought his back and landed on his tail. And so did we. So I don't know if we'll let it run out. But uh, one of the interesting things about this kind of work, it's like that car work, you know? It's a binary outcome. You either crash or you land. <laughs> it's uh, at some point, uh, you know, gravity. Uh, gravity's part of that. Uh, anyway, uh, given the venture that we're up to, uh, the real action is on the ground. Uh, there's a prize pursuit that does not pay for landing. It pays for the first 500 meters and what you do once you're there. Uh, and. Uh, uh, you know, what to say. That's the gist of uh, what it looks like at the uh, embarkation. Uh, it's a special brand of uh, technological refinement. Uh, you know, uh, uh, it, the, um, the engineering requires uh, uh, an optimization, a, a, an impeccability of just so many things. Um, the um, you know, without saying a lot about it, it's a, it's a step up. The other thing is you get one, you get one shot, right? Well, I guess that's characteristic most of life. You get one shot. And uh, that uh, everything from the uh, actuation to the structure to the kind of instruments that are used in the landing uh, are familiar. Uh, you know, it's, the only thing you can see in something like this is uh, the nuts and the bolts and the hardware. And of course, what really is behind it is uh, the software. And uh, uh, it's, um, it's simpler in many regards from the um, car racing software. It's a smaller code base. Uh, you have ideal physics. It's the moon, so there are a lot of... Uh, a lot of things that aren't troubling. Uh, but of course, there's the other part of it, which is uh, uh, latency and uh, uh, the autonomy and the fact that it has to work. One I thought I'd toss in is that uh, the way you always get to the moon is the red line, which is the direct uh, trajectory. And it's like moving your car from one location, a block, where you step on the gas and you get going, then you coast a little bit, and when you get to the next stop sign, you gotta hit it again. Now you do that with rockets, which takes propellant. There are ingenious trajectories, uh, which require much, much less propellant than that, but at a cost that they take more cruise time and uh, they're very intricate. And uh, that kind of a trajectory has succeeded in a direct uh, moon launch, uh, but never from uh, embarking in a high orbit, which is uh, our intention. So um, where are we? 
uh, it's too heavy. And uh, the uh, and it pertains to both what we do and everything there is this in space, and of course so many things that occur in robotics. Uh, it's it's almost like cell phones. They didn't become what they are today without being something before that. And uh, the engineering and the science that it takes to get there is a lot. And uh, uh, so much of uh, uh, space. Uh, work, space exploration, space science uh, is a function of what mass that you can deliver. It's no different here. Anyway, what I didn't say is that the Russian version was a ton. And you could do a lot when you have a ton. And uh, uh, the, um, this sojourner was about 11 kilograms. And there's really open question, how small can it be? And uh, still really really accomplish big things. About big things, I mentioned the discovery of water on Mars. Uh, that's the good news. But bad news is that it, every time it's observed, it's on the escarpments on the sidewalls. And that's completely unreachable by uh, current view of planetary rovers. Um, here's one good way to get it. And it seems so odd because on Mars there's almost no atmosphere. Uh, the physics work and it's completely possible to have uh, Mars drones. Absolutely. And uh, one other idea is to, because there's a, you can sit there and uh, compress a uh, tank of uh, gas into, an, into energy, propulsive energy, and then uh, use that occasionally as a flyer. It works because of the low uh, gravity. Um, beyond driving around, the resources matter. And they're everything from silicon to metals to uh, uh, oxygen and water and uh, bricks and mortar and uh, making things. Uh, where do you need them? When you need them? And then uh, uh, a, an overarching goal uh, for this community uh, is that uh, uh, one of the driving motivations is uh, human presence beyond the planet. And my bet is that the ways of thinking up until now aren't the way it's going to be done. Uh, how we started on this planet uh, was as cave dwellers uh, for a lot of good reasons. And uh, the, what it takes to actually make something uh, habitat and protect from radiation is a big deal. And what you have to carry with you is a big deal. And if it's right there, uh, you're going to use it, whether you're a groundhog, a bear, or uh, an explorer. So uh, uh, it is um, really humbling to uh, reflect on what this community uh, has uh, contributed by way of the vision uh, for space robotics. Uh, I'm probably the only one in the room that goes back far enough to the day when it used to be a, 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 an idea of astronauts and uh, the heroicism and romanticism of uh, a human in a can. And if you fast forward to today and all those accomplishments that we've known while we've been together for these 20 years, they're all robotic. And every mission that's on the book is robotic. And every vision that's out there of what to do and how to do it is robotic. And those are big shoes to step into. Uh, I think that uh, uh, you know, we, uh, we have a huge community uh, engaged in this work uh, and of course what it really needs are uh, generations to come. Thanks much. Anybody has questions for that? Yes? What is your target weight for the astrobotics rover? The 
uh, target weight for the rover has diminished from 25, so I'll, I'll start where we go. Maybe four kilograms. Four kilograms, a shoebox. Yeah, a lot of people just gasp. One of the things that's so neat about the business plan is it's a revenue plan, it's really working. And how it gets there is by selling kilograms to others that want to go. And those others including cooperation with other teams that are getting there. And uh, those include the Japanese and uh, the, uh, well, I I'm not going to go through all that. Now, every time that we're <coughs> ride sharing, uh, that, uh, that bogey of who gets what goes down. And uh, so uh, the, uh, that it is, uh, it's, 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 I think it's a very open, open question of whether we can hit that mass. Uh, everybody, that's, everybody that's riding is in the eight, kilo, eight to six kilogram territory right now, understanding what has to be done. Anything else? Yes. Uh, so right now, I think the source of energy for all the robots is solar energy. Well, when you say for all the for for all this close a couple of things. One, uh, it's illegal for us to have uh, uh, nuclear sources. Uh, two, the programmatics involved with it, uh, because we're Americans, require executive sign off in the process. Three, even if you think you would like it, the cost would be astronomical relative to anything that could be achieved. Uh, other ideas you have in mind under other types of energy? Because, it, by the way, all exploration is energy. It doesn't matter whether you're turning a wheel, taking an image, making a computation, sending data. It's every bit of it is energy. So, yeah, it's a big thing. But for now, yes, uh, solar. By the way, uh, I look forward to a lot more here on Earth, including in ag. You know, there are, there's a whole band of this planet that is favored with um, substantial, I mean, the entire world is not Pittsburgh. That's the one thing we don't have, is a lot of sun. <laughs> <laughs> Something else? Yes? So, uh, what's your take on the recent events and the, uh, the SpaceX? Uh, what's my take, what's my take uh, on SpaceX having well, a bad day? Yeah. Uh, one. Ah. <laughs> hey, what you want to understand? When the, you know, when things go wrong in robotics, nobody dies. What I, I don't know where you come from. Oh, it was a really bad day. Uh, there are some people in this room who have known me on, a re, on some really bad days. And, uh, you know, uh, uh, that doesn't, something like that, it doesn't stop anybody. And by the way, what you should know when that one, then one succeeded coming down on its tail, who was at the control console? Our own Paul Tompkins. And uh, once they did start to have, you know, what did they, who did they pick up? Our, la our most recent graduate, Neil Basson, uh, for the improvement of controls on that and the next. Uh, in part, uh, now, uh, you know, if, if you, you know, this idea, that these things that they're worth doing, they're not easy and they're not quick. I, I, I mean, this idea that you're going to somehow, uh, I don't know, master autonomous driving without ever bumping into something, it's crazy. Uh, uh, one of the things that's magnificent, there's, a, there's a, a, a tremendous video about that Russian initiative. It's called Tank on the Moon. It's inspiring. There they are, the entire lives are huge sector of the gross national project <coughs> prepared in every way they launch they make it up about 50 feet they explode in front of God in the world it's a bad day yeah, I get it. it's a bad day if you're not up to a bad day I'm not sure that you're up to this by the way uh, you know robotics takes a little of that right uh, I'm, I'm sure that's inappropriate. Maybe uh, I, I'm around, uh, and uh, I think we have a much more. I, we have the talk. One of the talks that I would have loved to give is coming up next. Uh, anyway, thank you. Okay, thank you. Uh, the next talk.